Okay, you guys, let's go ahead and do another example of ANOVA testing. Okay, so in this one, we're going to be looking at uh, Mexico, Canada, and the United States. We're looking at their middle class, and we're looking at the income, so the average income, true average income of the middle class of each of those regions. Okay, so let's go to kind of go through our checklist again. Our data we're still dealing with numerical versus categorical. We need to look at the original distribution to be normal or approximately so. The variances must be equal. And like for this one, I'm not going to give you any basic scenario, just that we want to compare these three groups. Um, so our response variable is going to be the middle class class income. The grouping variable is going to be our region. And our population is going to be, so middle class, class of US, Mexico, and Canada. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, that's right. Yep, middle class of US, Mexico, and Canada. And the parameter is going to be the true mean income. OK. The null hypothesis is that all means are equal. Alternative hypothesis is that at least one is different. And our alpha, let's set it up to be 0.05. Okay, so now we just need to basically run our test. We need to run out some checks to see if we should even do the test. And then we can kind of go on from there. So let's go back into our commander. I'm going to go to data import. And so check out this one. So the last one that we did, it wasn't in the correct format. It kind of had everything split. It would have Mexico in one column, US in another column, and Canada in another column. This one is how our commander wants to see it. It has the region all in one. It's got the grouping variable in one, in one column, and it's got the response variable in another column. Okay, so let's go to from Excel. Uh, we'll call this middle class. Click OK. And I gotta go track it down real quick. So, Google Drive is where I stored mine. And Income Anova. And let's view the data set real quick. And here it is. It's got my middle class. And it's got all of that. Okay, so there we go. And now what I'm going to do is okay so now that we've got this middle class data let's go ahead and let's do some graphs so let's go do a graph let's do a histogram middle class plot by groups we'll go by the region and let's just name the x class income and we'll say in dollars and we'll do north america middle class I want to click OK. OK, and let's see. I think it's got it. There we go. So this is the graphs that I got. And you look at each of these and you're like, yeah, those are basically normally distributed. They've kind of got a bell shape to them. We don't have a ton of data points. So I mean, basically, if it, if it even looks remotely normally distributed, uh, we are good. And each of these actually look decent. Okay, so we've got the approximately normal. Now we should probably check the variances. So let's go look at the statistics. Let's go to summaries. We can go to numerical summaries. We can click middle class statistics. We really only need the means and the standard deviations here. And the data we want to summarize by the groups, by the region, and we can click OK. And if we look over here, we've got, yep, Canada, Mexico, the US. We've got the standard deviations and we look at them and none of them, so the largest one is less than two times the smallest. So we're good to go. Let's continue on our way. So now that we've satisfied those two things, let's go ahead and actually run an ANOVA test. So let's go to statistics. We're going to go to means and let's go to one way ANOVA. So the region is our grouping variable. Middle class is our response. And we want to do that pairwise comparison. And we can go ahead and click OK. OK, so real quick, this picture right here is plotting the confidence intervals.
So does the Mexico versus Canada difference? It does the US versus Canada difference and does the US versus Mexico difference? And if those confidence intervals, if they included this zero point, it would mean that there's no significant difference in them. But for these guys, look, we can just see from the graph that we've got some significant differences. Let's go look at our data first though. So just looking at the raw data we've got from US, Canada, and Mexico, here is our ANOVA table. And look, we've got an extremely small p-value. So we can just come right in here and say the p-value is equal to 0 0.0000, and we would reject the null. All right, so let's write a conclusion from this. So we could say that we collected sufficient data at the alpha, sorry, alpha level of 0 0.05 to conclude, or to, let's say, reject the claim that the true mean income for the U.S., Canada, and Mexico are the same and instead conclude that at least one is different. Remember, our concluding statements can really only talk about the null and alternative hypotheses. And we all we got is that we saw that, hey, we have a strange result over here, or saying that at least one of these guys is different from the others. Okay, so now that we have a significant result, now we have to take a peek at our confidence levels. So let's go ahead and take a look. So if we scroll down, we can see that, okay, so these are the mean, or the mean standard deviations and sample sizes, so those are all the sample data. Now if we come down, we can say, okay, so we do the simultaneous test, we do the two key contrasts, and we're looking at the differences, remember, so Mexico minus Can Canada, the null hypothesis says that should be equal to zero. Same thing for U.S. and Canada and U.S. and Mexico. But what we actually see is that, so this is the, uh, estimation we've got the error we've got the t value and if we look in here check this out all of those are significant so we got significant results on all three being different from one another all right so if we go down to the very bottom we can see these confidence intervals now when when we previously had done a like a 95 percent confidence interval we were 95 percent confident that the one confidence interval had captured the true mean now what we're saying when we say that we're 95% confident now, we're saying that we're 95% confident that all of these confidence intervals that have been that have been done are capturing the true difference in means. If you actually were to just look at the confidence level of a single one, it's, uh, it's actually different from 95%. But in order to get the 95% as a group, um, they, there's some actual adjustments there. All right, so to put a long story short, let's start working on our confidence level statement. Okay, so here's what we can say. So we can say that we are 95% confident that the true mean, mean income for the U.S., or we'll say that the true mean difference, all right, so hold on, let's go back, that the true difference, difference of means, of mean incomes for the middle class of the U.S., Canada, and Mexico, are contained in the following uh, intervals. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy and paste this. We'll see if I can get lucky and that it'll actually format it correctly. We'll say copy and paste. Sweet! <laughs> Formatted it correctly. Okay, so I'm collecting it all because I'm 95% confident that all of these 
together that each of those have captured the true mean and then or the the true mean difference and now we can say with all um, countries being significantly sorry countries being significantly different from one another from one another and then so these results results show that the US at the true mean income of the middle class for the US is greater than that of both Canada and Mexico and also Canada being greater than that of Mexico. Okay, so the, our confidence interval statement is kind of bigger now, um, but we need to make this statement. So we're 95% confident that the true difference in mean incomes for the middle class of the US, Canada, and Mexico are contained within these following intervals. And then, so sometimes some of these are significant. In a previous example that I had done, none of them were significant, um, but sometimes only one is significant. But you still want to show them all because the confidence interval is with regard to all of the comparisons. And then down here, if only one was different, we could say that it was like with only the US and Canada being significantly different and no other differences were found. And then you could say which one, one was bigger. You could go into actually in the sentences actually saying the exact amounts that they were different, but I feel like since we have given, uh, you know, I should probably make this actually look a little better. There we go. Estimate lower and upper. I, sense, I think that since we've already given that here, in kind of this brief summary that we don't need to reiterate it again. If you don't like this format, you could be, you could just give the following intervals for all of them and then just talk about the significant ones. But anyways, this is one way that, that we could cover this. And that is just another example of how to do ANOVA testing with inside of Arc Commander. Good luck.